Hi, and welcome to this session titled The Powerful Duo. Your host for today will be myself, Aaron Alexander, and my colleague, Will Van Creeken. And when we say powerful duo, we're clearly not talking about ourselves. We're talking about ITSM and ITAM better together. So talking about ITSM and ITAM better together, clearly we can't start um, within those combined areas without starting at what we class as asset management. So from an asset management perspective, we generally find most of our customers have some typical key challenges. The first one being they just don't know what they don't have. Uh, and that's kind of comes down to a number of core areas, that being that they've obviously got them in spreadsheets, maybe they've got multiple tools, and they have no way of consolidating them together. And obviously doing so, it means from a service management side, they don't know how it's performing because they don't have the intel for the number of tickets that have been logged against it. They don't have the history around break fixes. They probably don't, from an out-of-time perspective, have the ability to understand that full cradle-to-grave life cycle of the particular device. So how do we look to resolve that? We kind of do that in a couple of core areas. The first being the fact that as businesses are now growing at a whole new speed, we're finding that businesses have devices where people work from home, maybe they're having a hybrid approach, maybe they still work in the office, they've got multiple devices, and really that's driving more devices, more platforms, more apps, more networks, more services. And they're calling this the everywhere work. And what Avanti offer is a core platform that provides service management capabilities, serving from a full ITIL perspective, and then an ITAM capability where we're going to provide you the place to hold a hardware and a software asset management system, provide product catalogs so that can be consumed from a self-service perspective, the ability to have full lifecycle management, everything from purchase orders, warranty information, all housed within the ITAM solution. But that's great, but if I don't have the data to get in there, how is that going to help me? So what we do is we offer the ability to get that data in in a number of core ways. The first being for our Avanti Neuron system, and we offer something that we call discovery. And discovery really to us is broken down into two key areas. The first being the ability for us to go out and do typical discovery such as active or remote inventory type scanning. But also we're finding more and more companies have other tools. Okay but we've already got SCCM, maybe we've already got Jamf, maybe we've got Intune, maybe we want to pull some stuff for our, our security products such as Qualys. How can we use that data? So Vanti has something that we call connectors, which we'll talk on in a little bit more in a moment. But once we've got all that data, we're going to look to take some inventory of that. We're going to look to normalize it. We're going to look to reconcile it and then really optimize that and provide you with a single source of data per asset with all those different data sources. I mentioned we have this connectors capability, and as you can see on the screen, we have a number of connectors pre-built there out of the box. And again, it gives you that kind of reassurance that we can use investments that you've already got as a business to supplement the data that we've either found or add it records that we may not find from a typical discovery scan. So for example, it may be that you want to bring in some mobile device information that doesn't sit in your networks that we can pull directly from things like Intune and so on. And again, we can use that to normalize and reconciliate the data. What that's going to mean is we're going to allow you to empower you as an organization to start to shift left and improve efficiencies and your effectiveness as a service desk. And we're going to do that by taking the typical things that would normally pass to particular specialists, uh, particular second, third line teams and allow certain aspects to either be done straight at the service desk or maybe automated at the um, self service side or even a step further where we can completely autonomously use our hyper automation tool to start to self heal. So really how we're going to do that is in a couple of different ways. If we take a typical scenario where a call comes in, maybe it's a typical break fix something like, for example, uh, I don't know, a shared drive no longer being mapped. Maybe at a first level tier, they don't have the capabilities or the knowledge to be able to do that themselves. And they're kind of going, oh, do you know, this would be, could be a really simple fix, but I need to pass this to a particular specialist team. Using the Avanti ITSM solution, 
and the fact that we already understand the asset information about that employee, we can actually use the Neurons platform within the ITSM tool to simply say, suggest me some fixes to actually resolve this at that first tier. That first tier engineer can simply click on the suggested action. Maybe it's map drive. It can prompt them for a drive letter and so on, and then go off and start to map that drive. No longer do they have to pass those to those particular core team and areas. Another one is why not start to be proactive from a service desk? So rather than have issues where it starts to degrade the experience of your customers and how they perceive the service desk to the business, we can actually start to use our neurons platform to look for particular patterns, look at particular errors and app crashes within the system. And we could actually start to be proactive in automating re the resolution to those. And then you could just simply let the customer know that we're aware that he was having issues with Internet Explorer. Um, actually, he was on an outdated version. So we've gone ahead and taken care and upgraded that for you. They didn't need to log into the ticket to the service desk. They didn't even, you know, their occlusion was, oh, they're not going to do nothing. It takes too long. I'm not going to bother. So it instantly changes the whole perception of your service desk. And again, remember, we've done this without the service desk even need to be involved. We've automated that whole process. So what we're going to have now is my colleague, Will, to take you through some of these core areas from a, in a demonstration perspective. Over to you, Will. Yes. OK, thanks, Aaron. And I'm going to first share my screen so we can all look exactly about what I'm doing. Uh, so hopefully that's been done by now. And I'm going to switch to my, my portal. We're seeing that's that now, Will. Uh, OK, wonderful. OK, so uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Will, based out of the Netherlands. Uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to provide you a live demo uh, with, with some use cases. Uh, I'll actually be showing the system from three main uh, perspectives. I'm going to start off with being uh, an asset administrator. Then I'm going to move into a role of as, as an end user. And lastly, I'm going to look at the analyst experience and how we can optimize the, the performance and the efficiency for, for that. Um, first use case is very much about asset management and its combined strength with uh, with ITSM. Um, and for that, I'm logged in here as being the asset administrator, as you can see. Um, I've got some, some dashboards to my availability. So the default dashboard shown to me is, is my asset manager dashboard. And with that, I have a complete overview of all the asset types that I have at the they might be IT related, they might be facility related, they might be medical related. So for medical equipment, that might be IoT. So all types of assets that you might have within the organization and how they are distributed across the organization. Maybe you're interested in assets that are reaching their, their warranty expiry. Maybe there are certain assets that haven't contacted the network in a long time. So those are the ones that you may want to focus on. Um, but I also have information on my asset contracts. Yeah, so what kind of contracts do I have? I, I might have a purchase agreement or a maintenance agreement, but I also have a lease agreement or subscription uh, contract. And when do these contracts actually, when are they up for renewal? Um, so we're going to be uh, getting alerts to, to all that. Um, also on the asset exceptions, it's giving some really useful information about any, any discrepancies that we see from what we physically um, find on the machine through our automated discovery scanning and what we have registered in our CMDB. So maybe there is like a, a difference in the location or, or the user assignment and we need uh, to take action on it or at least double check what, what the reality is. So it really identifying discrepancies between what the reality is and what we have registered in our CMDB, making sure that everything remains um, remains at good quality. Um, we're also looking into our asset procurement so we can manage purchase orders, we can look at them by vendor, or we can look at that at only the ones that I'm, I'm responsible for. Uh, so these are just some dashboards with information that are uh, that is useful for the, for the asset administrator. If you look at asset management, it's very much based on uh, the product catalog as, as a main component. And, and that's where you as an organization can maintain the models that you maintain as, as the standard models in your organization. And there might be models related to, to facility, uh, like you know, I've got a certain defibrillator uh, with, with some main characteristics, uh, with a nice icon on it, and, and maybe the life cycle of the asset. 
uh, but I can also have a look into uh, more my IT related assets like yeah, I've got an, an iPad mini. I know the, the internal external cost. I know the life cycle of the asset. I also have some replenishment information, meaning that if I can see that I'm running below stock, how much should I then replenish uh, for, that, uh, for that particular model? I can also look at my stock levels here. So I know uh, for this iPad mini, uh, I've got five items in stock. And these are the five items that, uh, that we've got registered in, uh, in the system. So the um, product catalog is used later on, as we'll see also from the end user perspective, because this information we show here on the description and, and the, uh, the actual inventory is something we use also on the end user side. Then let's move into the hardware asset uh, themselves. Um, this is very much, I'm going to do a global scan of anything which is related to finance, because I know I've got some, some nice details on these. And this is really about providing, uh, let's say, a 360-degree view on, on all of the asset, uh, the, all of the asset details. Let's come back. Let's wait a little second. Everything is still loading. Okay, there it is. Um, so I'm going to look at a particular um, server here, uh, which is my finance server. And for this one, uh, as you can see, this is having some, some main characteristics that is automatically inherited from the catalog to which it was linked to. I know the user location assignment and the status about it. But also, what is very useful if you would have um, an incident, it would be very useful to have immediate information about the life cycle of the asset. It would also be very good uh, to have information directly at hand about the warranty details, because having this information at hand, uh, then you can actually make some informed decisions about what to do with that incident. As should I fix it myself? It's the end of life, maybe I should uh, look for a, a replacement item. Uh, if it's still on the warranty, maybe I should uh, get the vendor in, in touch and uh, make sure that he fixes the issue. And so having that information directly at hand is very useful. Also, we want to have um, up-to-date information about the discovery. And that's why uh, Aaron already mentioned about our Evanti uh, discovery solution, that we can feed information in automatically into the CMDB, making sure that, that all these technical details about IP address, MAC address, CPU, memory slots, and all that is, is always up to date. Um, so we're keeping track of that contractual information, uh, sorry, the technical information. But here we're also looking at the contracts. Uh, you might have a purchase agreement, a maintenance agreement. You want to have information about when to renew and what a potential uplift could, could mean to you. So having that information is, 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 is absolutely relevant. Um, but also looking into the more financial side of the thing. Um, so we can link it into which purchase order has this particular asset. And this, so this, um, this, this is Superdome server. Um, with which, which purchase order have we actually acquired it? Uh, what was the initial purchase price? Um, also considering the age from that life cycle element we've seen before, we can then automatically calculate the depreciation value. Uh, so the current value of that asset. We keep track of the financial transactions, yeah, your maintenance transaction, your purchase transactions. We keep track of the logistical transactions. Yeah, when did it arrive in stock? When did we, we move it to, to a different location? When did we take it into production? When did it come back for repair? When did we dispose it? Yeah, so having that full logistical flow. Um, so again, part of that 360 degree view about all of the asset information. Uh, but not only that, we also want to look at what the integration is with ITSM. Yeah? Because if we have certain models that have many incidents, we might need to have a conversation with our vendor to say, okay, that, that performance of that model is really poor. We need to get a better price negotiated or maybe get a replacement, uh, a different model for that. On the other side, if you have certain models that are performing, performing really well, so that have hardly any issues, why not extend the life cycle of that asset from, let's say, 36 months to 48 months, saving a lot of cost there. Um, we're also linking into change management uh, because if you're implementing a change and which is linked to certain assets, you might want to validate that all the prerequisites for that change have been met. 
because maybe you first need to upgrade certain things on these assets before you can implement that, that change. So having all of that information together um, is truly really useful. So it's, it's about the ITIL perspective, it's about the inventory financial transactions, it's about the contracts, the, the, the technical side, and the full life cycle elements about the assets. And that's what we mean with providing a 360 degree view on all of the assets information. So now I'm going to move into my second perspective, which is the end user perspective. Uh, for this, I'm going to change browsers. And I'm now actually Marsha Hendrink uh, accessing the self-service portal. Um, this is just a design that, that has come out of the box for me. Um, I can do some generic search and search for, search for certain things in the knowledge base or in the service catalog or in the FAQs and, and so forth. Uh, but I can also go straight here into my service catalog to request for something. Um, that could be based on, for example, I want to just look at some facility type of requests. Uh, maybe I want to uh, have somebody move from, from department X to department Y or from the location Amsterdam to the location London. Or I have a request for, uh, for facility or I need some additional office equipment. I can make all these kind of requests, which I assume most of you will be familiar with. Um, I can also just do a global search on the top, so I don't have to worry about the categorization. But here I've got one which I've highlighted as my favorite, which is the mobile device request. And this is the one I'll actually be executing for this little case. Um, so I'm requesting um, the mobile device. Marsha is based out of London, so that's her home location, office location. I can choose for either a smartphone, tablet, or wearable. In this case, I will choose for the, um, for, the, for the tablet. And here I see the different models that we have inherited from our product catalog. Yeah, so the thing I showed you initially, uh, where we had like this iPad mini. So let's go for that one. And I can add some, some, some further characteristics needed or sort of further requirements. But for this case, I'll simply submit the ticket, which has now uh, is going to be put into my, um, into my shopping cart. You don't have to use that. You can you can basically bypass that if if needed. Um, but that's how the system has been uh, has been configured for me here now. So let's wait a little second. This seems very slow to this this morning. So that's at least proof that this is a this is a live demo. Okay, it finally came. So let's look at my shopping cart, and now I'm going to submit it out of my shopping cart and send it across to the to the service organization for for the fulfillment process. Um, so now as an end user, I've made my request, and it's now in the hands of the uh, service desk to fulfill the request. Uh, coming back to my role as Atlas Asset Administrator, I can have a look into my asset requests, and here is that mobile device request that we just had a look at, uh, coming from Marsha. Uh, from the self-service portal. I can see the details that Marcia had provided, so the iPad mini that she, that she ordered. Um, and also we can see here that this one actually requires an approval. This is simply based out of the workflow. Um, so going into the workflow viewer uh, just quickly, that shows me how for this mobile device request, it has been set up. So first we're gonna ask for the approval. That's where the red line stops. We are waiting for this. Then once approved, we'll send a notification, we'll create a task to assign the asset. We will then set the owner and, and, and change the status of that asset. So it's no longer in stock, it's assigned to Marsha. And then we can configure the mobile device and, and, and close that, that particular ticket. I'm not gonna go for the, for the full flow, but I just wanna show you some, some small things. So for the sake of this demo, I'm, don't, I'm going to do an override. I'm not gonna log in as the, as the approver now. I think most of you might might be aware of on, on, on how that's working. And then the next step would be that that is working, so that should not be the case here. Something is really slow on my side. Come on. Bear with me for a second. So as soon as the approval has been confirmed to the system, then it will move to the next step in, in, in the process and actually it will create a task to, uh, to assign that, that asset. Oh, 
That takes too long. I'm going to try and look at a different asset request. Oh, no, it's finally coming. I'm not sure what happened there. Apologies for that. Uh, so once I refresh, uh, you'll see in a few seconds that workflow will kick in, and it has now uh, assigned me a task to, uh, to assign the asset. I can accept the, uh, the, the, the task, but I can also look into the parameters um, to, to edit the details of this particular request, and then I can actually assign the asset. And those are the five assets, uh, the, the five iPad minis, remember, that we had in stock in the London for that particular product catalog. Um, so that's how, how asset management and service management, again, uh, come nicely uh, together. That brings me then to the last use case, which is about the, um, the analyst experience. Um, and actually, for this case, um, we're actually looking also at our neurons platform and, and to further extend, to even further extend, I should say, our asset management capabilities by applying artificial intelligence, uh, or applying self-healing via this hyper-automation platform, which is what Neurons is, is all about. So in this particular case, um, we're going to look into Neurons, um, because as Nero mentioned, it's very important that we know what details we have, if we have. Um, so we have our Evanti Neurons for Discovery tool itself, so which does the uh, the passive and active discovery on the entire estate. But in addition to providing that, uh, that, that discovery, we also have out-of-the-box connectors. And some of them have already been activated on this environment, but we have many additional adapt uh, connectors that can also be used. Yeah, so that could be like Mac, Microsoft Azure AD, that could be SCCM, Intune, Salesforce, VMware vCenter. So just uh, some examples on what kind of um, what, what kind of connectors we have out of the box in addition to providing our, um, our own discovery. So then if we would look at creating a new incident, we also using, uh, so that's the second use case in this perspective, I'm gonna create a new incident and we're gonna see how AI and, and our hyper automation platform can help in the resolution of this and speed up the process. In this case, I'm gonna assign this ticket to myself and we're going to say something like, this is full. And as soon as I tap away from it, the engine is automatically running. And what it does, so it's our Neurons AI engine that has run, has automatically categorized this ticket as being desktop servers out of this space. It's automatically been assigned to the desktop support team. And so it's getting the ticket to the right team the first time right. And so you don't have to ping pong it back and forth, but speed up the process. At the same time, we've also given some recommendations about what we call as neurons bots or healing bots that can automatically remediate this issue. Um, so as, as I mentioned, this doesn't require the first line analyst to go back to, 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 to the experts from the second and the third line, but now he can execute those things directly himself from, from the main page. And these could be very simple one-step actions, but these could also be very advanced workflow bots. That, uh, that can be configured. Another nice thing is, uh, I'm not sure if people are using the watch, using the watch list uh, a lot of times, but you can pin different items. And in this case, I've pinned one of my incidents, uh, which I've got about the PC is very slow. And this one is automatically already linked to an asset. So that's my client machine uh, running on a virtual machine next to me. And I can go into the full hardware details as, as we've seen before. On that, uh, on that Superdome server, but I can also look up this information inside my Neurons platform. So I now am launching Evanti Neurons, and I see a lot of things happening. So I see my some, some generic information. I see my, also my digital experience score, and the digital experience was automatically calculated based on, let's say, uh, the consumption of details from our discovery solutions, from the endpoint solutions, from our service management solutions, even doing sentiment analysis, and then uh, making calculations and all that uh, and providing that digital experience score. The incident was about the poor performance of the um, for, for, for the user on, on that device. Now, you can see that there is a certain process, CPU stress, which is pretty uh, high consuming uh, the CPU. I can straight from here, I could say, and go in and actually stop or kill that process straight from the panel. Um, also from a shift less strategy, 
we also have provided a lot of actions that can be taken here straight straight on. I could do a remote control. I can do a lot of custom actions, which are again the the, the bots that we can execute to remediate any um, any critical or uh, negative situation. I can look into the full details of my of my assets yeah, about the, the the motherboard, the network, the memory, and uh, go into the details and see what memory slots we have and and, and what the capacity of that is. I can go into my network console and do, for example, an IP config. So in real time, I don't even need to be on the machine, but I still get uh, get access to those more technical technical aspects. Um, looking at that um, process, which is kind of loading my CPU, this might be vulnerable maybe to to other um, to other devices as well. So I could also go into my edge intelligence and using simple natural language. I could say something like, show me all devices running CPU stress. And this gives me a list of, of those assets, in this case, just one, that actually is running that process at this very moment. So it's really adding real-time information to our asset, um, asset uh, information that we, that we can look at. And again, this is that one machine. That's my machine. I can, for me, simply say, stop the process, and then it will automatically be removed from the list here. Last thing uh, for this live demo I want to touch on, and that actually takes our shift left strategy even even further, is looking at our uh, our healing bots, our self healing bots. So I've got one example here about detect failing batteries. This is let me edit this new one. This is really about looking at real time again at this very moment. What is the the quality of my battery of my MacBooks or laptop? As I'm scanning the battery health. And if, for example, the quality of the, the battery is less than or equal than 58%, let's create a ticket into ITSM to replace that battery. Yeah, so the end user doesn't even know that he has an issue. He doesn't even know that he potentially has an issue. So really in this kind of predictive way, using that self-healing, we can automatically remediate before it happens. Um, so I as mentioned, even taking that shift left uh, a step further. Well, I hope this has given some, some further insight about how um, we can improve uh, the efficiency for the service organization, but at the same time, uh, provide faster service to the end users, because those are the main objectives. And with that, I would like to give it back to uh, to Aaron for some final notes and, and Q&A. That's great. Thank you, Will. <clears throat> On to the next slide. So yeah, as Will said, we are going to go into a live Q&A in a moment. We've got a couple of questions come in already, um, but feel free to start adding some additional questions that you may want answered. Um, but just to recap on what Will's has taken you through. Um, so as you can see, combining both ITS ITSM and ITAM together will help to increase your speed to your end users, providing them with resolutions quicker. So it's going to help to reduce costs because you're not going to need to pass particular scenarios up to different uh, areas within the business. You can start to resolve things and shift left. And ideally, improving the quality of the service back to your end users, so increasing that CSAT resolution um, in conjunction with some of the other areas where we can actually obviously start to increase um, people's awareness of things that you're doing that's proactiveness around that. We're also going to go ahead and, at the end of it, share out a, a white paper on five reasons where ITAM and um, IT asset management and service management are better together. So we're going to share that out um, at the end. Uh, and really, we're going to now hand it to a live Q&A. And we can see there's a couple kind of come in already. Uh, I'll just a quick read through what we've got. Um, so I think the first one we had, and I think Will did touch on it, was do we have a view of the device age? So the answer is yes, you would have saw that. And I guess that's done in a couple of different ways. The first one being if we can actually capture the original purchase order date, that could come from using the ITAM product. It could come from one of your connectors. So for example, if we're using um, some purchase order things from things like Dell, for example, we could facilitate that. But also remember, this can be a manual input as well. Uh, what else have we got? Can you also show us how to use? So, 
there's there's, a, there's an ask for what we can do around um, software license asset management um, degree. So I think from from a different session, we will obviously cover that off. Um, but for today, it's purely around the areas that we showed. But again, we'll make sure we follow that up. Or if you want to contact us directly, we're happy to provide you a more in-depth session on that. Um, there's a question on here around how does AI work with, with an incident that involves multiple teams? So I can kind of take this question in a couple of different ways, and I don't know what your opinion on this is, Will, but this is uh, where you could obviously use the, the kind of the actions on the right-hand side, and obviously depending on the teams, drive out different AI. So we obviously have that ability to show using roles which ones could be available. So it could be that you could limit for different teams certain actions, but also remember we can route these using our workflow. So for example, if it's for a particular team, it, you may want to run the same action, but maybe for example, cleaning up disk space, you need for a developer to make sure it's limited to certain values, you could have different flavors. Again, we may or may not read that completely correct. Will, any different take on that? No, but I think indeed from what you're saying, and also we're using that that workflow, we could also assign it to, to the different tasks related to that incident to, to, to the right teams. Um, but it's a little bit dependent indeed on how you in, interpret the, the question. Uh, what else have we got? Let's see here. Yeah, to add on to the question yeah. on the software yeah. management. Yeah. yeah, that's something we would also do with our neurons for, for spend intelligence. Um, so that's where we're doing, let's say, some more advanced uh, software asset management. Uh, but yeah, as I ever mentioned, that would be covered in, uh, in, a, in a different session, or we can do that uh, on, on request, of course. Yeah. There's a question on here to ask if it requires an agent installed on the PC or on the server for a hardware discovery. So you've got two options. We, we can um, deploy an agent. Obviously, doing and deploying that agent does give you some additional capabilities, as you saw of Will. So that agent can also provide you that real-time insight. It allows you to run some of the healing bots directly on the machine. However, if you're purely just after some inventory information um, from a discovery perspective, we can do something that we call remote inventory, where it doesn't need and require an agent installed. Yeah. So basically, it's a choice to, to work agent based or agent plus, uh, but agent based just provides you with a few additional capabilities. So, uh, a question from uh, around can we bulk import data? So, yes, we have a couple of mechanisms for that. Obviously, we can bring that in through flat imports, but also where possible, we would look to see if we have specific connectors. So if you have got our Neurons platform, we would look for, uh, obviously, if it's using things such as warranty information, we do have connectors for kind of top brands such as Dell, Lenovo, HP, and we're constantly adding to that. So if, if there is a kind of a particular vendor that we don't have, feel free to let us know, and we can obviously add that um, to our product team to look to get onto the roadmap. Um, but as I say, we can obviously bulk import that as well from uh, uh, and configuration side and remember you can also import directly into the neurons platform from a flat csv file as well uh, we've got a lot coming in now yes your question if we missed it, there was going to be a separate session on incident management no, I, from what i just mentioned it was more about spend intelligence from from a software asset management perspective does it collect on the certificate or you can request to, to, to get some for, for further demo on, on, on that. So there's a question on here around uh, data collection around certificates. Um, is this from Discover or manual input? Um, do you know the answer to that one, Will? Do we collect certificate no, information? Think, yeah, that's something we'd have to have to look into. Uh, I know we can, can, can keep track of the certificates uh, on how that's automatically discovered. Uh, that's something to, uh, to, to, to figure out. Yeah, so there's a question on here. Can we get software asset and licensing details into your ITAM solution? So yes, we can. So again, using that discovery piece, we have that ability to push the software asset information in there uh, and obviously allow you to uh, do around that. We do also have a completely separate module called Neurons for Spend Intelligence, which will allow you to upload information around your licensing 
pull connectors into things like Adobe, and that will obviously allow you to break down and understand a little bit more in depth. So kind of a, a lightweight version of some of the true kind of software tools out there, uh, providing you with the end of dates around particular um, software versions, where you can do upgrades, where things may come to end of life, that sort of stuff, your usage and costing and that sort of stuff. But again, even without that, you can still populate the CMDB and the ITAM solution with software that we've discovered and inventoried, either from connectors or that's come in from our discovery tool. I was actually just thinking back on that question on the certificates. Uh, I believe that also from an edge intelligence, we can actually do some, uh, we can actually run some queries in real time about certificates and, and we can use some tricks to actually then uh, also get that stored. So quick answer is basically yes. Um, does it provide device ownership? Update access information. So yes, we have um, an, an SCCM connector. Um, and again, we can import data from there. Um, if you go to help.avanti.com and type in uh, under the products uh, neurons, there is a full list of all of the connectors on there. So you actually be able to see what SCCM is pulling from a connector perspective. But also we can pull that directly in at an ITAM solution as well. We do have a, an SCCM connector as well. So you've got a couple of different approaches that you can do around that um, from an SCCM perspective. Uh, anything you see I missed, Will? No, I'm just scanning through as well. I think you've kind of covered all things, I guess. Yeah. It's going quite fast, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. They came in pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, it's, it's good that there's a lot of a lot of questions. That means that people are interested, so that's uh, that's definitely a good point. So for, for thanks for thanks all for that. Yeah. Yeah, and this is that. If if there's anything that we missed or anyone wants to find, uh, get any more in depth um, information around that, please feel free to reach out to us here at Avanti. We'll feel free to obviously answer any specific questions, or if anyone does want any additional uh, kind of breakout workshops or, or other demo sessions, we can obviously get them set up as well. Um, there will be some additional webinars coming up as well from some different topics, a couple on these subjects that you've already raised today as well. So thank you all for your time today. <laughs>